Hi everybody, it is July 19, 2019, before I get into this video, which is primarily about nanotechnology controlling our weather. This is from Operational Defenses Through Weather Control in 2030, United States Air Force document. I will be reading excerpts from it. Yes, nanotechnology, artificial intelligence, algorithms, are now controlling our weather and the differences that we are seeing now in radar all of the weird anomalies which I will point out um, well that's because nanotechnology artificial intelligence algorithms it all started a few months ago and it's in control of our weather. But I have to say thank you, thank you, thank you to every one of you who left supportive comments, all of you who were offering help, um, the Mac users offering their time to help me navigate Mac. I'm going to be posting another video um, it just it, 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 talking about the very strange things that are happening, I just don't want to get into it right now. I brought my computer to Best Buy. It's not the power supply. They said uh, the power supply is fine. Uh, they were thinking it was the video card, but I'm not going to know for sure for another week. I so uh, I, I really want to get into the nanotechnology, but I had to say thank you to all of you. You really, you know, and look, it's not just Americans. I'm Australians, Germans, um, Brits. I, you really, I just wish you were all in my real life. Um, yeah, I do. I, I'm forgetting something I know, but I'll bring it up in the video that I post later on that. Heat waves. Very hot. 92. Severe weather outbreak in Minnesota. Intense tornadoes. This is filtered on the 24-hour filter. Friday, hot, humid, chance of severe storm. Storm risk is highest so far this year for Michigan's recent severe weather alley. Now you have a severe weather alley. 1-2 uh, weather punch, dangerous heat, possible severe storms Friday, ring of fire pattern to produce fast heating, dangerous storms in Midwest and Northeast. Weather, hot and humid. Yes, 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 yes. Severe weather, severe weather. Yes. We are now experiencing on a daily basis severe weather. Uh, power out in the last 24 hours. Yes, I, I bookmarked an awful lot. Um, Baltimore, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, uh, St. Louis, Missouri, Corpus Christi, Texas. Uh, East Orlando, Florida, power outages. You can expect power outages a whole lot this summer. Um, trees coming down in so many different states. Uh, one video that I was listening to, this meteorologist said, the National Weather Service thinks it was straight line winds taking down these trees that were um, damaging homes and cars. Yes, we had flash flooding. Yes, we had hail. Uh, we're living something very unprecedented here. So, to see what is happening on a daily basis, the destructive force of our weather on a daily basis, you would think it would beg questions. And it's not just in one area. Wow. Uh, well, we know that we are at war. We know that they are using weather as a weapon. 
And, you know, even just saying that, there's a bit of me inside that is like, oh, you know, people are going to think I'm crazy for saying, I'm so tired of that. I am so tired of people who are, well, as they say in South Carolina, they just ain't right, knocking us down, knocking us down, creating in their own mind their own facts and, uh, well, my opinion is good enough for just writing, just like mainstream media, they write their own narrative in their own brain because it works for them. It's not the truth and it's not based in any research or facts or evidence. It just works for them. And then they go out and <clears throat> they're dangerous people. So uh, just listen to a few minutes of this. Major heat wave threatening much of the country tonight, 175 million Americans in 33 states. And for many, this is the hottest weather in years. The heat index, the feel like readings, well over 100 and now spreading. 107 in D.C. tomorrow, 105 in Philly, 107 in Chicago, and it will last into the weekend, feeling even warmer by Saturday. And tonight, authorities are warning this combination of heat and humidity could be life threatening. ABC's Alex Perez in Chicago. Tonight, that heat wave has more than half the country sweltering. After lightning packed deadly storms rocked the Northeast. Torrential downpours are turning New York's subways into waterfalls and sending thousands at this outdoor event scrambling for safety. In Connecticut, a lightning strike sending a large tree limb crashing onto a car. The driver rushed to the hospital. He did not survive. This as heat, humidity and stifling air smother much of the country. It feels like 108. Maryville, 109. This is serious. In Wichita, it felt like 108 degrees Wednesday. A bad day to be laying hot asphalt. When it does get hot like this out here, we do take plenty of breaks. Okay, so it is very, very hot. And I have posted a video. Heat waves already. And all you need to know that it's temperature modification induced by man. There are several methods that man can use to create these heat waves, black carbon dust that you see dumped into the atmosphere. I believe this was in Great Barrington, Massachusetts. The black carbon dust that I've been seeing here in Anderson, South Carolina, I'm sure a lot of you are seeing the scattering of this black crap in your sky. Black carbon dust for atmospheric heating. But that's not just, th th there's not just one method. So if you don't know the methods, click on the link below and learn about them. This guy. I don't know what is going on. Phoenix 10, uh, Fox 10, watch this. On into the temps and we're all doing okay. Wow, 750 degrees in Gila Bend right now. Uh, and 1,270 uh, in Ahwatukee. Now, I, I'm not authorized to <laughs> evacuate Ahwatukee, but this temperature Creek. seems pretty high. Cape? Yeah. So what happened to their map? Was that deliberate or a glitch? I don't, I don't think it was a, a, a glitch. Have we ever seen these glitches like that? I don't think so. Um, New York subway. This is a New York subway. And we do want to show you this video in this next story, all from last night's storm. Check this out, a video uh, began to surface on social media of heavy flooding at the Court Square 23rd Street station. This is in Queens, look at that. The rainwater was gushing so hard and so fast it actually knocked over a man who was waiting for the train. All right, we've never seen that before. I lived in New York. We don't, no, I'm sorry. So now the, the reason 
and who was waiting for the train. The MTA says a nearby construction site did not have a proper pumping system in place. In a statement, they called the incident absolutely unacceptable and avoidable. Well, yeah, unacceptable. This, this guy getting knocked down, I mean, he could have been just pushed right into that train. Why are we seeing subways now, not just in our country, in, uh, in countries in Europe, Canada, just recently, and San Francisco, I think on the same day that we had flooding here in this subway in New York. We also saw it in uh, the D DC metro area. Suddenly everything is just collapsing all over. All right, that should really beg questions for people. Um, nanotechnology. Remember I've said in these videos that I am seeing nanotechnology. These, the eruption of severe weather dots out of nowhere. And this was Harvey. Look at all of these dots appearing out of nowhere. And they all seem to have a pattern to them. And this straight line, look at it. Look at how this is developing. Little severe weather dots and it's a perfect uh, straight line. Okay. What is that about? That is about nanotechnology. Nanotechnology. Yes. Controlling the weather by 2030? No. No. They have they have already um, succeeded I want to read some excerpts. Now, when you read these military documents or papers on military, uh, you know, future um, military operations, strategies, they always have these scenarios, just like this Air Force document, weather operation, white carpet. And I thought it was the white carpet well, actually, I still think it's the white carpet, the white out that we experience. But if you read this, and I'll link below to everything, so if you want to read the 44-page document, go ahead. Um, it In this scenario, you know, they don't really explain the white carpet. I just will read, you know, bits of this um, unmanned aircraft enter the threat areas. Enemy integrated air defense system becomes fully active. Sophisticated directed energy weapons attempt to engage but are thwarted by a cloud layer between the strike aircraft and the crowd and the ground. UAVs descend below the cloud layer. They are rendered totally ineffective by that mysterious cloud layer. The CFACC directed weather control to proceed with operations. They get their order. UAV released its balloon payload. Diamond nanoskinned balloons of approximately three to five millimeters in diameter began distributing through approximately every square meter in a predetermined column. Column. In a pre determined column. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Um, where am I? Upon command, solar cells and elemental mirrors in the balloons began to absorb 
sunlight heating the skin of the balloon, the entire column, controlled through the balloon, balloon sensor and actor network, SANED, began to heat and developed into a localized high pressure area. As the high pressure developed, the jet stream was pushed north, stabilizing the atmosphere between the forward edge of the battle area and primary target area on command. Similar diamond balloons were released, reporting current localized, localized temperature, water vapor content, and pressure back to the UAVs as the UAVs passed their data back to weather control, computers developed specific inputs to the atmospheric equation. These inputs were sent back to the balloons. Some balloons utilized electrolysis to remove water molecules in the atmosphere. Others gathered water molecules to build cloud condensation nuclei. As they maneuvered towards their desired altitude, some balloons heated or cooled to establish a temperature pressure ratio allowing for the formation of clouds. Over the course of a few hours, a definite cloud deck developed. Constantly supported by an artificial high pressure area and fed by an army of micro balloons networked, powered, and operated by nanotechnology. An army of micro balloons. Yes, weather is used as a weapon. And I've been calling those eruptions of severe weather the soldiers, precipitation soldiers. The generated weather phenomenon was expected to last approximately four hours. Potential for external, external weather interference was mitigated by a preemptive high pressure jet stream steering trough. All sensors reported positive generated condensation. Advances in technology. Now this is off the scenario and into the body of the document. Advances in technology are beginning to bring weather phenomena more completely under our control. Now, I forgot to mention the date of this document, 2009, a decade ago. So, advances in technology are bringing weather under our control, greatly increased computing power and miniaturized delivery systems will allow us to create specific perturbations in local atmospheric conditions. These perturbations allow for the immediate and persistent ability to create localized fog or stratus cloud formations. The future of nanotechnology will enable creation of stratus cloud formations. We don't need the aerosols. That <laughs> They have many methods of creating cloud Weather creation involves networked miniature balloons feeding and receiving data. A network of diamond walled balloons enters the area to be changed and then both measures and effects localized temperature and vapor content. This system effectively shortens the control loop of an atmospheric system to the point it can be managed. Few issues have reignited weather control and modification interests, the fear of global warming and increased publicity of weather related tragedies. That's why they are bringing it on to manipulate the public into believing in global warming. It's simply a manipulative tactic and another document, military document, actually states, uh, essentially, and this is a paraphrase, that you know, when people see 
all of the destruction due to weather, they will gladly accept man controlling weather. So that's, that's where we're at. You know, look, we have been talking about geoengineering for how many years? You know, screaming, the chemtrails, the geoengineering, you know, the, 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 the making of our atmosphere toxic. People thought that we were crazy. And then we have mainstream media reporting on geoengineering and how they're now now just starting to geoengineer the skies for yeah well we don't know really what the result will be but we've got to try something because the world's coming to an end in now less than 12 years and people they don't even has anybody come to you and said okay you were right no, of course not. But they just fully accept it. Same thing is going to happen with weather modification. The technology of weather modification has expanded into rain and snow development, cloud seeding, hail, dissipation, dissipation. Yeah, really? Lightning, dissipation? No. Uh, they can do that, but what are we seeing? We are seeing hailstorms. Well, Mexico, what, they had five feet of hail? Uh, we see hail the size of baseballs, softballs, golf balls, and it's causing a lot of destruction. But they can, they can dissipate that hail. They can, they can make it go away. Why aren't they doing it? Well, because they're bringing about destruction. China. Of course, mainstream media was reporting on China using their uh, control of weather, their technology to modify uh, the area around the Olympics and no one batted an eye. Uh, the Chinese efforts were put on display for the world during the 2008 Summer Olympics and nobody batted an eye and here we, we're now in 2019 and we still can't get through to people. It's such a bizarre world that we are living in. People use their brain in a way that it works for them. They deny, their denial is great, you know, on the truth. You know, whether it's personal truth, you know, they deny their own behaviors and their own immorality and they go on thinking that they're swell people they deny the collective truth and go on thinking that we're just exceptional people and nothing is wrong here oh yeah we have a few problems you know trump's a racist and aoc is uh just a younger version of the batshit crazy nancy pelosi all right you know it's it, it takes a lot of work to remain sane sane today so the military uses uses of controlling the weather are vast and future technology will enable more specific control of the weather actually creating not modifying weather and that's what we're living Air Force 2025 paper, weather as a force multiplier, owning the weather in 2025, specifically addresses the increase in computing power in conjunction with current weather modification techniques to shape the battle space additional 10 years. Into the future, we'll see more dynamic and specific use of nano and micro technologies in conjunction with increased autonomous networking capability, a military commander will create weather to utify, uh, utilize defensively. And here is radar right now, current time, 3.17 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Look at what is happening down here in uh, Georgia, Alabama, into South Carolina and 
Mississippi, the, the creation of weather, and we've got our weather balloons, the eruption of these weather dots. That is what we are seeing. Now, I'm stating that based on my research. I absolutely could be wrong, but my research, when I'm looking at this now, this is what I'm seeing, nanotechnology and a military commander creating, uh, using weather as a weapon. Okay, so nanotechnology enabled sensors and networks answered the problems of measuring, altering, and communicating the variables within a weather system. The delivery of these systems can be accomplished with current technology. The center of this weather control system revolves around a formation of diamond nanoskin balloons encasing a host of nanomachines perturbations in atmospheric conditions. In essence, box in a volume of airspace. The flow only needs to be stabilized and directional enough to allow for modification of temperature, pressure, and vapor content to the degree that it results in cloud formations. Perturbations can be as simple as heating or cooling a large area of atmosphere. The perturbation does not need to be as specific as building a cloud system and may be hundreds of miles away from the area of interest. Once these designed blockades are in effect, the air mass that has been stabilized can then be adjusted. Future applications of these perturbations take the form of isolated low and high pressure areas or troughs to steer the jet stream or its effect in relation to the area of interest. Making the high or low pressure area can be as simple as heating or cooling a massive column of air with diamond balloons or microwaves, <coughs> which <coughs> we see has been operating for a very long time. Once the mass flow into and out of an area is controlled, it becomes a simple issue of establishing specific localized temperature, dew point spread, pressure gradient, and water content per volume of air through a column in the atmosphere. Motion, location, and networking of the balloons can be controlled in several ways. Altitude is controlled through the buoyancy of the balloon, through a combination of electrolysis of water and nano pumps, removing molecular, molecular water from within the balloon. <coughs> Excuse me. The walls of the balloon could have nano fans providing additional thrust. So in my videos, one of the reasons why I called them like precipitation soldiers is because you have this eruption in a straight line in whatever state and then you see them just it's like there's there there's a propeller you know they just accelerate forward so that I think is what is happening here utilization of the earth's magnetic field and the charge on the skin of the balloons themselves will aid in formation keeping with other balloons. Nano network controllers within each balloon will maintain contact with neighboring balloons. Nanotechnology talks. They communicate. Yes. It's all communicating up there. I, I posted videos in 2011 of clouds communicating in Great Barrington, Massachusetts. People thought I was crazy. But what I saw, it was obvious that something was happening because these clouds 
began, they were just in the sky, and suddenly the cloud itself almost developed like a different um, quality to it. You know, it got almost very smooth and gel-like, and then I started seeing these gel things come together. And yeah, it was the clouds communicating, nanotechnology. That was back in 2011. And frankly, you know, their communication seems to be a whole hell of a lot than how we communicate with one another. So maybe we should just be paying attention and learning how to communicate because they're quite accurate. Solar power through the nano antenna arrays will charge nano batteries. Directional micro antenna will be available to determine um, the position of the balloons with the formation relative to one another. The diamond balloons will house an array of sensor and communication technology. These communication systems collect and transmit on-site accurate data to the complex computer system that model and establish the controls for a weather system. Some of the larger balloons function as a node housing a GPS receiver and micronized network uplink to provide high frequency communication of the network to a ground station or a UAV. The distribution of these balloons will depend on the amount of atmospheric atmospheric sorry I was not supposed to read that last line, I don't think. Anyway, um, atmospheric, I'm sorry, yes, I was, mass flow. At least one to two balloons per cubic meter would be required to initiate changes in conditions. Uh, these estimates were based on current cloud seeding densities. Networking these balloons is similar to nano swarms. And I've posted videos, there's a lot of videos on nanoswarms on YouTube, so if you don't know what nanoswarms are, uh, you can check it out. The Autonomous Nanotechnology Swarms. Yes. Where the military can dump into our skies these swarms of, uh, well, nanotechnology that can follow us around and actually kill us. The study of self-controlling and communicating networks began in the 1960s. The concept accelerated within the last five years. This document was um, when? 2009? Yes. So, they've been at it for a long time. Uh, the weather control application of such networks follows the development timeline and technology of the ants, the nanoswarms. The nanoswarms modeled after insects, ants. It's a network architecture applicable to future nano factories, ants, is the support structure for addressable, reconfigurable technology. The core of art is a networked swarm of nanomachines capable of configuring themselves for a variety of tasks. Surveillance, to take us out, to create weather. Individual methods of atmospheric modification at the molecular level share development with the capabilities of nanomachines. A combination of nanopumps working at the molecular level can transport water between layers in the atmosphere as the balloons bob up and down in the air column. Nanofactories can conduct electrolysis on water molecularly, building nuclei of droplets or ice crystals or reducing water vapor, cooling through thermoelectric nanomaterials currently being designed for computer applications will enable control of the balloon skin temperature. This cooling and vapor content will have an effect. 
on the localized pressure. As with many nonlinear systems, small inputs can develop large and self-sustaining events. Larger, more temperature-based control balloons will be the center of the high and low pressure perturbations. Will nanotechnology be developed to the level of atmospheric control by 2030? Yeah, because it's not 2030 and they are already using it, the weather machine. Four generations of nanotechnology currently in the second generation, 2009, second generation, uh, specifically marked by the advances in computer CPU technology. Advances in the third, uh, third generation will allow for much of the diamond nanoskin balloon systems to function. The fourth generation will converge. Networkability, energy conversion, molecular scale activities, and atmospheric change. And I am guessing here, but the Generations of nanotechnology are following the generations of 1G, 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G. And Doppler radar is using millimeter. It's in the millimeter um, range of the electromagnetic spectrum. And millimeter waves, that's the 5G. So, passive nanostructures, aerosols, nanoparticulates, nanostructured metals, polymers. That was the first generation. Second generation, active nanostructures, targeted drugs, bio devices, amplifiers. Third, in 2005, systems of nanos, uh, nanosystems, guided assembling robotics. Fourth, molecular nanosystems. Molec uh, molecular devices by design, atomic design. So it's here. Conclusion. The future of nanotechnology will enable creation of stratus cloud formations. Advances in technology are beginning to bring weather phenomena more completely under our control. Ten years ago, current capabilities uh, such as the 4D VAR computer modeling enable the establishment and design of a cloud system, small designed nano skin balloons allow the measurement and delivery devices to become elements of the weather system, removing closed loop control response lag time nanotechnology allows these balloons to maneuver and network within and from the atmospheric system. Finally, nanotechnology facilitates the basic functions of measuring and changing critical variables required for weather control operations. All links are below.